Hello everyone, welcome to Zoom in China. Last time we talked about Zhang Xueliang. In this episode, we will talk about Yang Hucheng. He is also on the Communist Party's heroes and models list because he led the CM military mutiny that changed Chinese history. In this incident, Zhang Xueliang is famous, but Yang is the main character. In his later years, Zhang Xueliang said that he was just assisting Yang from the sidelines. What Zhang and Yang did not anticipate was that the CM mutiny was resolved peacefully and the Chinese Communist Party survived, but the CCP abandoned them. Yang Hucheng was born in 1893 in a farmer family in Pucheng, Shanxi province. Yang did not receive good education and had to ask others to write letters. Before and after the Xinhai Revolution in 1911, Yang became a well-known soldier. He joined the Shanxi Protectorate Army, which opposed Yuan Shikai under Sun Zhongshan's commands. In 1922, when Yang was stationed in Yulin in northern Shanxi, he was introduced to Wei Yechou, one of the founders of the Communist Party in Shanxi. Wei later served in Yang Hucheng's army for a long time and had a great influence on Yang's thinking. In April 1927, Chiang Kai-shi, the commander-in-chief of the National Revolutionary Army, decided to purge the party and arrest the communists because of the internal sabotage of the Chinese Communist Party. Yang Hucheng did not follow Jiang because he sympathized with the CCP, but only let Ye Weichou and other communists leave his unit. The Communist Party then set up Northern Anhui Special Committee, which was subordinate to the Henan Provincial Committee of the Communist Party, headed by Wei Yechou and Nan Hancheng. In October, Yang Hucheng applied to join the CCP, hoping to be the second He Long and convert his troops into the Red Army, but was refused by the CCP Henan Provincial Committee. I think Yang Hucheng could have been depressed when he was not offered the job. Probably the CCP did not trust him much. However, this did not stop them from infiltrating Yang Hucheng's troops. Yang Hucheng then married communist Xie Baozhen. In 1928, Wei Yechou went back to encourage Yang's troops to riot against Yang. This was in accordance with the general policy of the Communist Party's 87th Congress to launch an agrarian revolution and armed resistance against the Kuomintang which Yang opposed in vain and had to take his wife as secretary on an incursion aboard. As a result, on April 8, the riot failed and the 30-year-old Wei Yechou was arrested. He was executed by the Nationalist Army the next day. In the fall, the CCP agreed to accept Yang Hucheng into the party again. But Yang was in Japan at that time and was not informed of this, and never proposed to join the party again until his death. However, Yang's name was on the Communist Party's roster. In 1929, Yang Hucheng, who was unsatisfied with the Chinese Communist Party, led his troops to Jiang Kai-shi's banner and became the commander of the new 14th Division of the National Revolutionary Army, stationed in Henan. During the war between Jiang Kai-shi and Feng Yuxiang, Yang was in charge of guarding Nanyang and defeating the attack of Liu Ruming. In the war between Jiang and Tang Shengzhi, he defeated Tang Shengzhi with courage and strategy, and was later praised by Jiang in his own letter. Yang Hucheng was good at battles and was sympathetic and tolerant of the CCP, but he did not win the CCP's trust. Instead, he was considered an opportunistic warlord and decided to continue to undermine the strength of Yang's troops. Under the instructions of the CPC Central Committee, the CPC Henan Provincial Committee launched riots and mutinies against Yang Hucheng's troops stationed in Henan. In 1936, Yang was forced to negotiate with representatives of the Chinese Communist Party, clearly expressing his hope that the Communist Party would not instigate a mutiny by his troops. In 1930, after the Great War in the Central Plains, Yang was ordered by Jiang to return to Shanxi at the head of his department and become the chairman of the Shanxi provincial government. But what Jiang Kai-shi did not expect was that he actually appointed a member of the Chinese Communist Party, Nan Hancheng, as a secretary general of the Shanxi provincial government to preside over the work of the provincial government on his behalf. Don't you think that this General Yang was quite blind to what's right or wrong? 
After the Great War in the Central Plains, Yang Hucheng's new 14th Division was upgraded to the 17th Road Army of the National Revolutionary Army, with more than 60,000 men. Known as the Northwest Army of the Nationalist Army, under the pressure of Jiang Kai-shi, Nan Hanchan left after Yang's division. As the saying goes, a wrong ideology can be driven away. Yang Hucheng, who was obsessed with the wrong ideology, was cheated by the Communist Party, but still took good care of the CCP. The organization of the CCP in Yang's department also existed in secret and developed rapidly. By 1934, his guard regiment had more than 200 members of CCP, and the 2nd Regiment of the Appeasement Office established in 1935 had nearly 300 members. Some people couldn't bear to look at it. Song Zhixian, a member of the Shanxi Provincial Party Department of the Kuomintang, criticized the messy situation in Xi'an at that time in this way. Xi'an is a place where red and white are not distinguished. Many people work as Kuomintang officials and earn Kuomintang salary, but they say and even do things for the Communist Party. Speaking until here, for all our new friends that are watching our program, please don't forget to subscribe to us as we keep going. Here is a story about Song Qingyun, the father of Song Zhenzhong in the novel Red Rock with the movie Eternal Life in Flames, which many people know. In the film, he was said to be the secretary of Yang Hucheng, but in fact, he was a member of the Communist Party who was sent to Yang's ministry to do propaganda work, not as a secretary. Song, with Yang's consent, reorganized the newspaper Northwest Culture Daily, which had been conducting anti-communist propaganda. The newspaper was then largely taken over by members of the CCP. Song Qingyun even personally wrote editorials such as security within the country comes first in order to rebel against foreign aggression, denouncing Jiang Kai-shi's passive resistance to war and active suppression of the party as a reactionary policy. After the Red Army was besieged by the Nationalist Army and fled to northern Shanxi in 1935, Jiang Kai-shi transformed Zhang Xueliang's Northeast Army to Shanxi and arranged to work with Yang Hucheng's Northwest Army to suppress the Communists. At this time, Yang Hucheng held military control of Xi'an. Mao Zedong felt the threat of it, therefore, he sent Yang's old friend Nan Hancheng and Wang Binan to convince him. The modern history published in China after 1989 indicated like this. In the autumn of 1935, the CCP immediately ordered Nan Hancheng to send someone to convey to Yang Hucheng, the August 1st manifesto of the CCP. In December of the same year, the CCP again sent Wang Feng to negotiate with Yang Hucheng and the generals of the Northwest Army. In the spring of 1936, Wang Binan was assigned by the CCP to return from Germany, specifically to convince Yang Hucheng. In the early 1990s, the magazine Youth of China, a magazine of the Central Committee of the Communist Youth League, also published an article that praised how Wang Binan had become Yang Hucheng's staff and how he had successfully completed the rebellion against Yang and Zhang and participated in the planning of the Xi'an incident. In order to expand his military power, Yang was fearing that Chiang Kai-shi might not support him. At the same time, Yang was repeatedly brainwashed by the CCP. In April 1936, Yang Hucheng finally allied with the CCP, signed a non-aggression agreement, establishment of liaison, traffic, and other station agreements, the exchange of information, the initial formation of a cooperative situation. He was completely on board with the ship of CCP. After, the Chinese communists traveled to and back from Xi'an and Yan'an, entered the interior, and returned to northern Shanxi, all with the route provided by Yang's 17th Route Army. The nationalist government instructed Yang's troops to fight the communists, but he secretly collaborated with the CCP and had been their complicit. Then Yang Hucheng went to convince Zhang Xueliang, who was also surrounded by Chinese communists, to conspire against Jiang. In Zhang Xueliang's Northwest Army, there were lots of CCP members and leftists who knew all the secret activities about Zhang Xueliang. All the routes to connect with CCP and even all the human resource information of the whole army. Zhang Xueliang's adjutant and confidential secretary Mao Jianqiu repeatedly encouraged Zhang Xueliang to instigate the Xi'an incident, saying that he should not fight the civil war for the Kuomintang. The cunning Chinese Communist Party caught Zhang Xueliang and the Northeast Army's grief and anger over the loss of their homeland, approached him and surrounded him so that the inexperienced Zhang Xueliang, who was impetuous in his anger, finally changed his view of right and wrong unconsciously. Under the infiltration of the Chinese Communist Party, ambitious Yang Hucheng and inexperienced Zhang Xueliang gradually intensified their differences in political views with Jiang Kai-shi. 
Three days before the Xi'an Mutiny on December 9, 1936, the Chinese Communist Party planned a rally of more than 3,000 students in Xi'an calling for cooperation between the Communist Party and the state, and the unity against Japan. The next day, Yang Hucheng instructed Song Qiyun to participate in drafting important documents, such as the passage of Zhang and Yang's military remonstrance and Zhang and Yang's eight proposals. These documents were brought back to the newspaper by Song Qiyun and issued overnight. On the third day, Zhang Kaishi came to Xi'an again, and Zhang and Yang launched a military mutiny. Although the CCP was forced by Stalin to ask Zhang and Yang to not kill Jiang, and the Xi'an mutiny was finally reconciled, the mutiny caused Jiang Kaishi's nationalist government to overthrow the eight years of suppressing bandits. It also destroyed Jiang's strategic plan to resist Japan. The schedule for full-scale resistance to Japan was forced to be advanced, and the Chinese people paid a huge price for this. While the Chinese people paid a huge price for this, and the Chinese Communist Party, which survived through the danger, took advantage of the war to grow in size. Here, I want to emphasize that if the Xi'an mutiny did not happen, the CCP will have been eliminated and the Chinese modern history will be changed. After the Xi'an mutiny, Zhang Xueliang, who realized that he was cheated by the Chinese Communist Party, apologized and accompanied Chiang Kai-shi back to Nanjing, where he willingly went to prison. Yang Hucheng, who helped the enemy, was even worse off. After being abandoned by the CCP, Yang Hucheng questioned why the CCP member Nan Hanchen had gone back on his word. A peaceful solution means sacrificing me. Why don't you think about me in this situation? You only speak from the side of your party. I can't see myself finished like this now. Yang was still rebuking Kong Chongzhou and Li Zhenxi for the battle, saying they were stupid and peaceful resolvement is the stand of the CCP. They never had a chance to knock on the door of Jiang Kai Shi's central committee. Now they use the Northeast Army and 17th Rao Army to knock on the central door, so how can anyone join us while opposing the central committee? After the Xi'an mutiny, Yang Hucheng was removed from all his positions by Jiang Kai Shi and was forced to go to Europe to study the military. After the breakout of the war, Yang Hucheng repeatedly requested to return to China to fight against Japan, but was not granted permission, so he returned to Hong Kong secretly. Then, he was arrested by the national government and imprisoned in a mainland prison for 12 years. After Jiang Kai Shi left the mainland for Taiwan, Yang Hucheng and his children were secretly executed by the military intelligence in Chongqing, and his wife, Xie Baozhen, a member of the Chinese Communist Party, died of illness. Yang Hucheng's family ended up in a tragic situation. Song Qiyun, a member of the Chinese Communist Party, who had been working in Yang's department as a writer and United Warrior, was executed at the same time with her family members. Yang Hucheng, a general with great military talent who had won many battles in the northern expedition of the Nationalist Army, eventually fell into the bow of the Chinese Communist Party and lost his mind, and was abandoned by the cunning Chinese Communist Party. He was put on the list of heroes by the evil Communist Party and could not escape being used in his life and death. That's it for today's story. If you like our program, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And we'll see you next time on Zoom in China.